The Bible teaches us that light has come into the world, but men love darkness more than they love the light. Because if they had loved the light, they would have come to the light that their deeds would be exposed, that they would be revealed for who they were, that they would shine or stand in the light of God's examination and be revealed for what, who, and how they are. There are all kinds of light in the world. There is, you know, full spectrum lighting that people use to grow plants. Nowadays, people are putting full spectrum lighting inside their houses and growing pot plants. You know, they think they're going to make some money or they're going to somehow circumvent the law as though they were getting away with something. And yet, those lights use up more electricity than a normal light and it's obviously being monitored. So, people don't seem to realize that you can't hide from God because God has brought light into the world and you will be exposed sooner or later Jesus said it that the things that were done in darkness would be shouted from the rooftops the things whispered behind the scenes would be known to the world even like you see these days when you notice that there's been a text messages and all the text messages can be pulled up as a record of your texting or that you see that at the time of your accident the police can access a record of you texting during that accident. Oh no, I'm caught. Come to the light, Jesus said. So there's lots of things that are happening in the world, even from smartphones being able to videotape actions that are going on, to just the fact that God himself sees everything that's happening. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness more than they love the light. But those that do love the light come to the light. They enjoy it they respond to it. You see these plants, I could grow these plants under full spectrum lighting, you know, and they would look the same, sort of. They wouldn't be quite so full. They would, you know, grow and they would exist and they would still be pretty. But the funny thing is, is summer sun and spring sun causes this plant to go nuts. It's bonkers. I mean, this thing is growing like crazy. I mean, I've got flowers springing out all over it. And yet, when I move it into the house as a house plant for the winter, it doesn't do so good. It barely survives with my grow lights. You see, man tries to accomplish what God does naturally and doesn't come up with quite the same effect. That's how it is a lot of times with the light that God has given us. God has given us a certain portion and measure of faith that we need to grow and develop but there used to be a song that was very interesting that really was powerful in its way of being kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You know, and kids used to sing it, you know, and the funny thing is, is that before the kids were singing it, adults were living it. You see, they didn't try to think of themselves as a great light come into the world and that somehow they were going to save the world. They just treat it as what little bit of understanding that they had from God was their little light. They were a little light shining in the darkness and that if you understand the principle, then when it's dark, one candle stands out a whole lot brighter than two or three. You don't notice individual candles when they're set in a candelabra of seven. You don't notice them as much when there's hundreds in a room. But you see, if there's one candle shining in the darkness, you notice it. The one sun that we have that shines upon the world, we notice because it rises in the daytime. But if it were night, we wouldn't notice the sun because there'd be no sunlight except that which is reflected off the moon. And if you've ever been in a full moon and you stood outside, it was almost as bright as daylight when you weren't in the city, when you were out in the country, out in the middle of nowhere, if you've seen a full moon rise upon the earth where there's no other light shining, it's almost like walking in daylight. That's what God wants to do with you. He wants your light to be a reflection of Him. He wants you to be the full moon, so to speak, of God's presence to the world. He wants you to reflect the light that He's shining right now, this daytime, upon the world so that men would either reveal that they love darkness more than they love the light or they will come to you and ask you why do you shine
because that's the difference a person who's shining tin a person who's smiling is an obvious attraction you see when you're not smiling and when you're not shining nobody wants to be around you it's pretty obvious to me and it should be obvious to you this little light that you have you either let it shine because one way or another you're going to be obvious Jesus said that no light that you know is is ever lit is put under a bushel or that a city is set you know underneath you know the ocean but it's set on a hill where everyone can see it God's putting you where everyone can see you wherever you are however you are whatever you are God has put you where you are because he wants you to be that light that one light that one person shining in the darkness you see when it comes to disasters or all those other things that come upon the world, you know, even in the winters or the dark or the night, then there should be one person who stands out, not affected by those. There should be one person who looks like a light and a beacon, like a lighthouse warning people of the shoals that are coming, you know, the rocks, that the storms of the ocean, you know, though there be fog, you know, there's still that light shining, warning people. Hey, be careful, be aware, or a light that says, come to me and I will give you rest. You see, you should have the answers to all of the world's problems, not because you know them, but because you know where to go get them. You see, a person comes to you and they don't want you to solve their problems. They want you to tell them how to get the answer. And so a lot of times people make that mistake of thinking they are the light rather than turn to the light and just say, well, you know, excuse me for a minute, but pardon me, but I don't, I don't have your problem solved. I don't know what the answer is, but I know who does. And you know, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to turn to the light. <sighs> and, and give me a minute, you know, because it's pretty heavy what you're sharing with me. You know, you're telling me all this stuff, you know, and I could give you a flip answer, but you know, that's just a pat answer, you know, pray or turn to God or do all those stupid things, you know. I don't want to give you that kind of impersonal response. I want you to know the answer from Jesus. So, can you give me a moment? Can you wait for a second? Can you kind of listen quietly while I just pray to my Father? And you know, that's what Jesus did with his disciples. Jesus didn't presume to automatically have the answer. Jesus asked his Father and set an example for each and every one of us to do the same. You don't have the answer to the world's problems. You don't have the solution to every single situation because you have a Bible. You don't have a pat answer for everything that comes up in life because though the scriptures are sure and they are a more solid word of prophecy, the way the Holy Spirit applies them is up to the Holy Spirit. The way he is working in a person's individual life is not for you to determine. It's for him to reveal to you at the moment that he wants you to know, if he wants you to know. So the reality is still, God is the light. We are merely reflecting that light that he's given us. And the light that he's given us is Jesus in us. So that little light of yours that you need to let shine simply makes people aware that you have the light inside. But if you really want to be the person, the go-to, the first responder that meets the needs of those around you and have an answer that they'll never forget, then just like those ten virgins, you know, who five were wise and five were foolish, you have to be full of that oil and your light shining brightly because it will go out. And the reason why it went out and they weren't prepared was because they thought they were the light rather than they were dependent upon he who is the light that lives in them. Oh yeah, this little light of mine, it's going to shine. But except that I refill my vessel full of the Holy Spirit, except that I restore the joy of my salvation, except that I walk with God and talk with him daily, <laughs> There's no way that I could be a light in this world as dark as it's getting, and neither can you.